Welcome to Compiling an Altium Designer as we continue working on our multi-sheet Raspberry Pi expansion board design. With all the components placed, everything is wired and the ports are added for connections between the schematics, we are ready to compile the design. Compiling a project does four things. Creates the design hierarchy if one exists, establishes the connectivity within and between all the design sheets, builds a unified data model of the design, and finally, it performs electrical rule checks based on the unified data model. Note the X's at the ends of the wires on the J4 connector. These are directives placed on single pin nets to prevent errors from compiles. We will discuss these in this module. To compile a design, right click on the project file and select Compile PCB Project. If there are errors found during the compile, the message window panel will open up as you see here. If there are only warnings, the message panel will not open. It is recommended to check the message panel for reported warnings at least once prior to sending the design to the PCB for layout. This can and will avoid issues later on. Clicking on the class header sorts the report as you can see with errors and then warnings. Before we examine the errors, we should review the project's ERC compiler settings or electrical rule check compiler settings. The compiler settings, being project specific, are stored in the project file. To access them, right click on the project file or on the project menu and select Project Options. This opens up a new window with a number of tabs. The first tab is the error reporting settings. When the design is compiled, these are used to parse the UDM or the unified data model for the design. A report will be generated based on report mode settings here. Clicking on the nets with the only one pin violation entry, and then on its report mode, we can see the pull down menu showing the following options no report, warning, error, and fatal error. Setting the report mode is as simple as clicking on it the desired entry. I would encourage using the defaults as a first pass and later on only changing as needed. The defaults were developed over time and represent a good starting checklist. Clicking on the Set to Installation Defaults is a good way to recover the basic setup if you have inherited this project and are not sure if these are in fact the default settings. I have seen instances where a designer inherited a design with these settings heavily modified. The result was a failed PCB. He reported problems with the design to Altium and I asked for a copy of his design to review. I found a number of settings that had been changed from error to either no report or warning. This resulted in a false sense of all is well. Resetting them to the defaults and recompiling showed errors that explained the board failures. Please modify them with intent, but consider running the basic default as a sanity check. The next tab labeled Connection Matrix is a graphical representation showing the various combinations of connections and how the compiler responds to them. Hovering over the intersection of unconnected and input pin, we see that combination would generate a warning. The output port connected to an input pin combination would generate no report. Clicking on the square changes the settings and allows the user to cycle through the various options. As with the error reporting tab, clicking on the set to installation defaults will reset these settings like this. There are a number of tabs that we will look at later, but for now, let's look at the options tab. This upper section has the settings for the location of the output path for generated files. Normally, these would point to a subdirectory within the project directory. Hitting F1 will open a tech docs page with more information should you wish to dive deeper into the meaning of these settings. We will focus on the netlist options and net identifier scope sections for now. Under the netlist options, there are a few checkboxes that provide guidance to the compiler in the creation of the final net name for the PCB. While nets on different sheets can have unique names, as long as they are connected by the same named port, the PCB can only have one name associated with the track. This section allows the user to specify how the UDM names are created. The Net Identifier Scope has a pull-down menu with Automatic currently selected. This is the default and normally should be used when compiling a design, allowing Altium to determine how the various sheets are related. You can force a particular mode, if needed, even though it's very rare that this would be required. The only instances I saw where this being used was with a design that had been imported and had a very odd structure. The flat option makes connections 
only via ports, and this mode would be selected by the compiler in automatic mode with our current flat multi sheet design. The hierarchical option is the same as automatic for most designs, while strict hierarchical isolates the power ports to each sheet. One interesting option is the global one. This removes all sheet boundaries and ties together all nets with the same net label, regardless of where in design they reside. This can cause some interesting results and errors due to the now global nature of all the signal names. There are other settings for hierarchical designs which we will look at later. Again, normally just use automatic and you should be fine. Now that we have reviewed the compiler settings, we can review the results from our compile. As you recall, we had reported errors in the messages panel. Clicking on its tab pulls it forward so we can review the listed errors. Even if there were no errors, it is again always a good practice to review the warnings at least once just to be sure that they are expected and acceptable. To open the messages window, if it's not already opened, click on the panel button on the bottom right of the window and select messages. Clicking on the first error, duplicate net names, the detail window in the message panel updates and we jump to the schematic sheet where that error is first flagged on. Here we see the GPIO5 net connected to the Relay1 port. Clicking on the port and hovering over it, we see the schematic where the connected port is located on the Relay IO sheet. Clicking on that entry, we jump to the Relay IO schematic. Looking at the schematic, we see a typical error that is caused by not placing a net label on the bus connected to a port that has a bus name. It's important to remember that ports are external facing only and are not seen on the page they are on. So while we have an external 2-bit bus called Relay, there is no connection on that sheet to Relay 1 or 2 without the net label being added to the bus. By the way, clicking on the schematic will clear the masking and highlighting. Recompiling, we see a number of errors were cleared by this one fix. There are still three errors, all single pin errors. Double clicking on one of them brings us to the offending element, and let's look at all three of them. This is another typical error, a single pin net. This could be the result of local net labels not matching exactly, and therefore not connecting, or, as in the case for this design, this net is not meant to be connected. There are a number of I.O. connector pins we are not using, and to avoid this error, we had placed a no ERC directive on the other wires. We left off these three directives to show the error and the process for adding a net directive. To use the specific directive, right-click on the error in the message window and select Place Specific No ERC Directive option. This puts a directive marker on the mouse for this particular ERC error. Now you can move and place this directive on the wire. While we're at it, we notice the other errors are the same. Let's go ahead and place the same directive on each of them as well and then recompile. Now the compile comes up clean with no errors and just warnings. At this point, we should review the warnings. And if we were satisfied, we would be ready to move to the PCB layout phase. Saving the affected schematics completes this phase of the design capture. This completes the design compiles in Altium Designer module. In this module, we set up, configured the compiler, and compiled our project and fixed errors. Please do exercise 11, Compiling in Altium Designer.